Friends, we're happy to see you all. Welcome uh, to our high-tech world. We have talked a lot, a lot about uh, digital. We talked about the fact that new generations go into the digital uh, domain. And uh, um, if you know how to protect uh, your health and for many externalities, you also need to understand how to protect yourselves in this uh, uh, world uh, and time of new technologies and digital technologies. And this is something that Ilya Sachkov is going to talk about, a very young man. So with your round of applause, we'll have him here. Ilya, while you are picking up your microphone, I'll uh, introduce you. Ilya is uh, in the uh, Forbes uh, top 30 most successful young people in the world and uh, in the uh, technology sector. He sets up uh, an international company which is called IB Group, which is a leading cybersecurity company today. So please ask questions and he will tell you how to survive in this uh, era and how to uh, protect yourselves in this digital world. Uh, hello all, I hope that you can see me or uh, you can hear me. Can we pump up the volume for the microphone? Thanks. Thanks for coming here to my very short presentation. I will try to describe to you a little bit about cybersecurity. But uh, in a way, I can see that. Uh, a, little, a little background. It is uh, 2003, I'm 17 years old. Uh, my university, uh, Bauman Technical University, my alma mater, which I graduated, but I started my company in 2003 when I was the uh, first grader. My profession was very strange. It is uh, called uh, uh, cyber criminal studies, uh, something that you know you cannot really boast about uh, in front of girls so don't mention that in bars what was it it was 2003 this is 2015 um, probably one of the gravest periods in the uh, uh, history of relations uh, between uh, russia and uh, europe but we sign i mean uh, on my on the right, it's myself. We are, we are signing an agreement with Europol about uh, cyber criminal studies and uh, uh, combating crimes. So we started off with uh, investigating uh, cyber crimes, and uh, our job was to find hackers, to catch them, and to put them in jail. So it is very important in terms of cyber security because uh, crimes are committed by people. And now, based on uh, what I know about cybercrime, I can share with you a lot. Uh, now, a few words about my company, and uh, we work in uh, over in, in, in about 60 countries. We have uh, over 200 uh, staffers uh, with the average uh, age of 26 uh, years old. The youngest guy is uh, 14 years old. So, in terms of uh, cyber security, we see that the average way age of people uh, dealing with uh, cybersecurity is going down. So uh, you can go on site and you will see many uh, vacancies uh, for cybersecurity experts. And uh, some of those jobs can be offered only in IB Group. Uh, like I said, we did uh, thousands of uh, investigations, uh, 150 of them uh, uh, were uh, culminated in sending criminals uh, to jail for five or six years. So we know something about cybercrime, and we know how to stop crime at, uh, before it is committed. So this is uh, we uh, produce technologies, and we sell technologies. And this is the uh, competitive uh, landscape. Uh, uh, Gartner, Forrester, and IEDC, they uh, more or less compare uh, high-tech companies, and that you see that in our segment we have uh, seven such companies, and the only one coming from Russia is the IB Group, which means that young people with ideas, um, 
And that was my idea from uh, when I was a kid. I like to fight evil, and I think that cybersecurity and cybercrime is a big evil. And uh, through this, we can set up companies where people can use their brains uh, to do very interesting things. Uh, regardless of politics, uh, you can be successful and uh, demonstrate that engineering uh, thoughts and ideas can uh, win over evil. Uh, various international corporations, uh, Microsoft, Raiffeisen Bank, Capital Bank, uh, across the world, uh, these are our clients. Uh, uh, now, coming to the uh, story, uh, let's uh, start um, uh, with uh, discussing uh, cybercrime. Probably uh, this is not a really fun, uh, the fun part of my presentation. I'll have some fun later. So we live in an era, so we no longer are surprised by the fact that a flash drive in my pocket uh, contains a two terabyte of data. When I was at school, uh, all my uh, programming files were on a diskette, uh, so I sometimes had to carry C 16 or 20 such uh, uh, floppy drives uh, with me. Now, on a flash drive, we can keep a lot of information. And thanks to technologies, in a very short period of time, we are in a new economy and in a new life. Uh, thanks to technologies, we live in the uh, uh, probably in the safest uh, of all times in the history of civilization. We can see each other uh, over the internet, we have mass media, we have social networks, and many of the wars are no longer possible. And this is interesting statistics. If you, There is a uh, TED, uh, Stephen Binker is uh, reading this. Uh, 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 compare uh, the uh, centuries 20, 21st. Do you think that those were kind of like uh, bloodthirsty uh, uh, centuries? Uh, well, I mean, people say that the 20th century was a bloodthirsty century, um, Second World War, many terrorist acts, etc., many local uh, conflicts. But in terms of the human civilization, the 20th century was the safest uh, uh, century. In the, uh, uh, now we live in the 21st century, where you can die in the street or because of war or because of uh, some attack, physical attack, um, uh, the chances for that are minimal. And uh, that's why the population of the world uh, grew. But there are also many bad guys. Uh, so they can find uh, the, the place for their crimes uh, in uh, cyberspace. And hacking is just probably a very minute part uh, of uh, what you can do in cyberspace. You can sell drugs, uh, you can sell various materials. Uh, uh, there are all kinds of fraud there. There's um, some uh, contraband and uh, fake goods, etc. hundreds of crimes. And this all happens uh, in uh, the internet. 25% uh, of uh, our budget in Russia we spend on uh, defense and security. This is open data. You can find this. Uh, uh, in on the government side. Uh, so 25% of the budget is spent uh, to protect uh, ourselves uh, from something that can happen to us with very, very low probability. And not because uh, you know, we are protected. It's a very important. It is, you know, we, are, we live in a world where cybercrime uh, has a, a, a much higher probability than traditional crime. So the statistics you can check at Europol and FBI websites. Um, well, I spent, what, uh, 90 seconds. Uh, and we had one robbery in, Euro in Europe in the same uh, 90 seconds. About uh, 3,000 uh, personal accounts were stolen on the internet. We had uh, 10 new malware samples uh, appearing. So we spent 25% of the budget in Russia to protect ourselves uh, from wars, but uh, we actually have uh, many more uh, in and interesting crimes uh, happening in that time. So people say hackers, uh, criminals, a couple of stories to share with you so that uh, you would live uh, through the emotions when I see the people who commit such crimes. Uh, we know a lot about uh, uh, crime, and we um, shoot various videos. Uh, for example, on HBO, you can uh, uh, watch a show. There is a, a subscription channel on cyber uh, crime. Uh, you can also watch a Discovery movie on that. Um, you can watch our movies on Bloomberg. But in 2011, we had. Uh, 
a Russian company approaching us and saying that, guys, we want to shoot a, a movie about hackers. Uh, we have uh, David Kaplan, an American director, a great guy, and we say, OK, we can help you, because our task is also to demonstrate to people in the world that hackers are not good. This is just a new form of crime, and we have to hate it uh, like traditional crime. It is important to hate uh, crime. This is important. So we had this director, Mr. Kaplan, coming to uh, us, and he, uh, as a baseline, uh, took a uh, a story which happened in the U.S. Uh, uh, this is actually the warrant uh, for arrest uh, on the left, uh, and on the right is uh, a caption uh, from a, U a U.S. newspaper. 37 hackers, Russian new hackers, were arrested, and they were managed uh, by the sexiest uh, woman uh, hacker in the world. Uh, that's the way she looked. Um, I am not sure about whether she was the sexiest, but anyways. Uh, but she's, she was a girl, yes, judging by the photo. But uh, since she was the leader of that uh, hacker gr uh, gang, uh, the movie studio thought that it would be a good idea to shoot a movie about this. I mean, it's like, you know, uh, a lady with the... Uh, a dragon tattoo, so I mean, she probably looks like this. I mean, if you don't have a good vision, then probably you won't uh, see much difference. I, I'm, I don't know what, what's being uh, translated. But anyways, David came to us, uh, spent two weeks, and he uh, left then, and in parallel, we have uh, another parallel story developing. After 2010, we were in, uh, doing some investigation into, uh, into the matters of a group of hackers who were stealing money from European, American, and uh, British banks, and, uh, and the companies that were serviced by those banks. The group uh, was very good, so the IQ level uh, was very high. That's actually one of the most popular crimes in the world. If you uh, use online banking, there, is, there are a lot of uh, bank guys who want to steal your money. Um, because the main idea of hackers would be, of course, to steal money. Because like uh, regular uh, criminals, uh, they are going after one thing, money. So we spent a lot of time to... Uh, Look for that group. It was internationally uh, uh, searched by Interpol in uh, various countries. Uh, so what what happens? In December 2015, part of uh, that gang uh, was revealed to be, as usual, in Moscow. And there were arrests made. Uh, so they were all arrested, uh, documents were confiscated, and an interesting fact was revealed. Uh, that 12 people who were arrested are 100% uh, beneficiaries and owners uh, of the movie studio, which actually was shooting that uh, movie by director Kaplan. Uh, they had 100 people on board, so they shot uh, and uh, had uh, like uh, 30 movies made. Look. One of the most uh, dangerous uh, hacker groups uh, used the money to set up uh, uh, a Russian uh, movie studio uh, where 100 people were employed, and they, you know, uh, laundered the money, and they started shooting movies about hackers, about themselves. So this is an example of cybercrime. Think about the intellect. Uh, when David, the American director, learned, he has spent two weeks drinking, just you know, drinking outright, because he, he never realized that he was working for uh, hackers. The most interesting part of that uh, story was that uh, this uh, sexiest hacker in the world, why would the guys uh, uh, want to, you know, make movies? Uh, that group headed by uh, Christine, her name was Christine, the, that was the section in the U.S. Uh, so in 2000. Uh, Nine, that group in the U.S. Uh, was uh, arrested, and the guys were worried that they would also be arrested. So they asked uh, David uh, Kaplan uh, to be involved in shooting a movie to understand whether IB Group was involved uh, in the investigation of Christina. So they wanted to use the setup of a movie to understand what were the mistakes made by Christina and her group to be arrested in the U.S. Uh, so they wanted to learn 
from mistakes. Uh, this was a story. Just imagine the uh, organization and uh, the control that they uh, had in mind. So they also had two restaurants in Moscow, by the way, not only a movie studio. Some people are fascinated by this. Uh, some people would probably remember this uh, picture from a movie called Hackers. I actually never saw that movie. So people say, wow, those guys are smart and nice. Uh, yes, they are smart, but they are not nice. Uh, they are organized crime. If you have business, you have business, or you have uh, some close ones who have uh, a, a business entity and the money is stolen from the account of this business, uh, you won't think about these guys as nice. Uh, you would be angry and you would hate them. So you need to have this uh, hatred before you actually are the subject of a computer crime. People are smart, but they're using uh, uh, information technologies not to really steal in the streets and do some, uh, you know, socially and publicly uh, dangerous uh, crimes. Uh, before I come to the, my next example, I want to ask you, do you know this guy? Well, Nobel is on the right, yes. It's a Nobel uh, medal, yes. Probably you know that. Uh, good, good, yeah, yeah. You are part of our investigation team now. Uh, on the left is Daniel Kahneman, who received an economics uh, Nobel Prize um, in 2008. Uh, and uh, importantly that you came to this uh, presentation is that uh, Unless you read the book, uh, uh, his book in the next month, I won't make friends with you. His book, well, I mean, his Nobel Prize was uh, uh, for what he wrote. I mean, uh, uh, his uh, uh, book was uh, Thinking Fast and Slow. Uh, Daniel Kahneman wrote a book and still is doing some research uh, about uh, how uh, our brain is reacting in the wrong way. I mean, you would be surprised how it is uh, related to uh, cybersecurity. You, I, I think the way we assess risks is uh, directly related to uh, this. Uh, so when we go out into the streets, we need to understand uh, what kind of uh, risks uh, we may face. Uh, for example, Think about Belarus. Uh, Belarus can buy some submarines, but does it make any sense? I mean, it's a good weapon, but Belarus uh, is a landlocked land country, no sea, so you cannot really use submarines in Belarus, and you don't need Belarus. Same in cybersecurity. We need to be able to protect ourselves from something that we may face. The problem is that our uh, uh, brain cannot really assess probabilities. It, it uses uh, statistics and very simple things. Two simple examples of this uh, thing. Health is something that we need to know uh, more uh, than uh, cybersecurity. Uh, health and time are two limited resources left in the world. So we need to kind of like know something about health, right? It's an important resource. I'm 31 years old, OK? I live in Moscow and in London, probably sharing 50-50. Why would a person like myself uh, uh, would die in Moscow and in London? Just do a rating of uh, three most common uh, causes of uh, death for uh, people uh, between the ages of 30 and 50 living in big cities. Like, just for yourselves. Uh, uh, just test uh, Mr. Kahneman whether he was right. So what, uh, what would be the probabilities and the causes of death uh, for people of my age in, in Moscow uh, and in London? You would be probably remembering something, something that you saw on TV. So your brain would uh, uh, make some ratings. Uh, yeah. uh, the right answer is that the, uh, the uh, highest probability for you to die in Moscow and London is on Friday night when people go out to drink something. So the most common cause of death for people uh, between the ages of 30 to 50 years would be some fake alcohol. And this is both in Moscow and London. It's not about cancer. It's not about uh, heart attack. Most people die because they are poisoned uh, by uh, fake alcohol. 
second would be road accidents, and then uh, uh, third would be injuries. And we're trying to protect ourselves from cancer, from heart attacks, uh, from something else. Some, somebody is using uh, homeopathic uh, uh, medicines in 2017. I mean, it would uh, probably help you uh, in a similar way like you're drinking water. I'm a friend of a commission fighting pseudoscience, so I have strong points against homeopathy. Well, I can sell you uh, water that would treat cancer. That's homeopathy. The same is information security. Read this book. A lot of interesting things there, because all of our lives, the theory of success is based on the right or wrong assumptions and very we should be clear about where our brain makes the wrong choice to make the right choice. And that's evident, almost evident. And my final example associated with Mr. Kahneman's book is this. You uh, walk into a casino, which you are not allowed actually do, to do during the youth festival in Sochi. In some future, you would come walk into the uh, casino and you can put on red or black. But uh, the dealer would sell previous, would say that previously it was 30 times red. And you start guessing. The method, the theory of probability says the probability of uh, going red or uh, black does not depend on the previous cases, but your brain starts telling you, since it was red 30 previous times, then there's a regularity. Now, in ca casino, it's only probability theory, no intuition. The same in information security. A lot of problems with attacks because people do not uh, assess the risks uh, correctly. They don't know the hackers. They know, don't know the motivation of the hackers. They know myths and legends. So to protect ourselves, we need to be aware. It's people who commit crimes. You know, uh, should know these people, know the motives uh, of their actions and why they are doing. This is information security in most corporations of the world. The paradox of, of the job I'm doing, since 2003 to 2009, we were de doing investigation only, forensic. We would come to companies very well protected, very well known. They would hire us after hacker attacks because their money was stolen, their network was down, was down, something wrong happened. They spent millions and even billions of dollars per year for information security. They didn't have incidents of the past, and they thought uh, they were protected. I love this picture. And there were no attacks because, because they were not attacked. There's a myth that hackers want uh, to break into nuclear power plants or a smart city. Why would they do that? Hackers are interested in earning money. They. Can, well, how can they earn money from a nuclear power plant? They can earn um, jail, uh, imprisonment, uh, whether it's Russia or the United States of America. You will not earn any money. So the nuclear power plant seems to be protected because nobody attacks it. Like you cannot uh, capture Joe because nobody is trying to capture Joe. Now, the probabilities and specific examples after that, 98% of crimes computer crimes happening in the world associated with one simple thing. The purpose of the hackers is to earn money. Unless they see this opportunity, they will not attack on object. And only 2% are attacks associated with cyber terrorism, uh, espionage, etc., where the main motivator is to destroy something with no reason or uh, steal information, not money. But the most common crime is stealing money. Let's see how it looks like in 2017. This is a, sp a specific example from a criminal case. And this is the first lecture in the youth uh, festival in Sochi where you can earn money, a million dollars, if you help me. This is how a uh, carder shop looks like. What is a carder shop? It's a place in the internet. It looks like a normal web page where two types of people um, get together. One type of persons is a person who can have the technical possibility to steal a lot uh, of uh, dumps of plastic cards. 
what's on the uh, magnetic uh, st strap on, on, on the card. There were five million cards, date about these cards in this shop every year. If you are a waiter in a shop, you cannot steal five million dumps of credit cards, although some waiters try to do that, but they can do 60 per month, a maximum. The second type of people is uh, the ones who visit uh, the, the site, buy the dumps using special equipment. They uh, uh, manufacture those cards and they get cash uh, using those cards. This is one type and very common because each one of them has cards, there's money on the bank account and you can um, withdraw cash. It's very simple. It's not a black screen with green letters like shown in American movies. It's simply a web page. Every person knows what to do. Select the type of card or the type of bank, pay $10 for the data on, from each card, put it in your to your basket. If you have questions, there's a support service. It works better than most retail uh, on, online shop. Uh, the response would come uh, much quicker. And you pay for the data on the card, and you put it on your boxes. For smart people, this is not instructions of how to use it. Don't do this. This is crime for you to know. But. Unfortunately, I'm showing this uh, that because I'm, this is very simple. And IQ of computer uh, criminals is falling because of this simplicity. When the government sees a similar site, the first purpose of the government is to close the site. And do you think an organized criminal group with many people involved who are stealing five million cars per month, uh, the turnover of millions of dollars, and if, I'll give you a number. If they close their site in the internet and they spend $20 to uh, start that site, do you think they uh, will stop their business because the government stops their site? We don't no longer do this because we don't have the site. What are we going to do? I'm going to sell fruit and I go to Turkey. I'll be, uh, work as an animator in Turkey. Do you think that could happen now? Once the government closes the site, uh, they We'll uh, do this. We will register a new site, and let's think of how they found our previous site. And their iteration will be much smarter, like it happened with the sites uh, dealing with drugs internet. In the past 2011, when people would sell drugs into the internet for a computer criminalist, it was a present. You could find such a person in one day, knowing uh, how it works. But then the government said, no, we're simply going to close those sites. So they clo closed the sites of the, the drug dealers. They moved to gray internet, yeah, if you know what it is. There, there is uh, such a gray internet. This is because of the closures, the number of sites selling drugs internet increased by 300 times. Previously, you could find the person in one day. Now, it takes three years to find those criminals. Recently, they closed the ramp store. And that took three uh, years to investigate and didn't catch most of the people. So the logic is uh, this. Once we see this in the internet, you need to be aware. Closing this site uh, doesn't mean anything. Not, we have to look but deeper what's behind the iceberg. Behind the iceberg is a criminal group using malware to uh, infect post terminal. This is the device where we put our um, uh, cards in, into uh, retail chains. Target and Home Depot. In Target, they stole 56 million card numbers, and Home Depot, 78 million. What else do we know about this criminal group? The owner or the creator of this shop to uh, uh, sell site, he earned $6 million from selling this information. Uh, what is important here, that this guy is going to have the best lawyers of the world. For $6 million, you can, well, first you try to hide, but after that, you have very good legal support. So when we collect material for our investigation, we need to be aware that uh, our uh, evidence should be very strong. Another uh, thing, in addition to everything else, uh, have a look at the profile of this person. When we started the investigation, we knew that he, his name was Rescator. 
that he was super uh, computer criminal. Cannot find him. And did many other bad things. It turned out uh, you cannot find him because nobody tried to find him. Uh, and uh, 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 trying to find him through Google and Yandex, and you can repeat this slogan. And unfortunately, not all investigations go like this. We made the assumption. The, the name of the guy was Andrei Khodorevsky in Odessa, Bunina Street, uh, apartment number 24. Because computer crimes are there, and do not uh, protect the turf so much. Uh, they, they come from older technology. That's how Andre looks like. He's a millionaire. He has six million dollars, actually more. And he is uh, being. Uh, 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 people are searching him, searching for him. We know the name though. Why does he look like this? Because it's very dangerous for a rich uh, cyber uh, criminal to show uh, the change in their social status. Uh, uh, he is not, is not a silly person, right? He don't want to change uh, status symbol. Well. If we catch Andre, if he's in this audience, then we will get $1 million as a prize. He's somewhere. Information about where, about his whereabouts costs $1 million. Once you get this guy, you will don't have to work. This is a typical computer criminal. He's young. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't uh, uh, create bad feelings about himself when you see him in him. He likes to take photos of oneself. He, uh, these are the most more reputable photos of him, all sorts of photos. And psychologically, you don't feel any antipathy towards this person. He's a guy who takes photos of himself all in the old military truck. And this is a new type of a criminal. Uh, and and causes no dislike. And this is new crime. And this is very dangerous. Psychologically, we don't feel dislike for this purpose. He has a good sense of humor. All his databases with cards, he called American sanctions. This is the response to American sanctions of Russia. He lives in Ukraine, though, and the logic is not uh, exactly clear, but still, that's what he called that. Another example. Uh, our uh, public objection. One year in Russia, three criminal cases. You may know the answer, but my, mm, uh, let me give you more. This is uh, my example from the army. Three criminal cases. Have a look. In one year, one uh, court of Russia. Uh, accounts uh, of the billboard, the breaking into the billboard and Sadovering, center of Moscow. A person with a, head, uh, of a sense of humor uh, hacked uh, a billboard uh, a screen in the center of Moscow and put pornographic videos on it. Because it's uh, while well, people are staying in traffic, uh, they're bored and they loved it. Uh, and this is one of the or pictures from that. This is cybercrime. Second example. I didn't show the photo of that picture because I'm sorry about that person. I'm honestly so. This is a dangerous criminal. Moriarty, Phantomas. At the night, he climbed a fence of the cottage, of his own cottage, and stole. Uh, 20 roses and lilies from the neighbor. He, and he planted those in his own uh, plot of land, stealing it from the neighbor. In the morning, he was caught. Uh, I imagine police department. So, uh, roses, rose bushes stolen. The uh, crime of the century. And now Mr. Anikin stole $10 million from the Royal Bank of uh, Scotland, uh, working as part of the criminal group. What well, does that mean, stole? He stole it from the clients of the bank. 
And this is your personal loss, all in all, uh, $10 million. What were the sentences? Uh, give me an answer. D give me your guess. The first version, uh, the same. No, yeah, you're optimist. What other versions? Have a look. Very simple. For hacking the screen, it was six years in prison for this joke. He will laugh for six years after his joke. I th think it should be a penalty rather than a jail sentence. 20 roses of bush, bushes of roses, two years in prison, and $10 million theft. Mr. Anikin got a five years conventional bailout. And if and there's some text here, and you can find the video about his arrest and sentence at, in court. 9 p.m. during the court proceedings, there was news appearing on TV channels, and the news was this: attention. Uh, you know, you shouldn't share this new piece of news with Russians. A talented young programmer for the theft of 10 million dollars uh, surprised uh, the bank and got five years with a bailout. So what uh, the whole of Russia heard is that uh, talented young programmers, 10 million uh, theft and uh, five years with release on bail. All uh, well, people will draw these assumptions next year. All people in Russia, pensioners, old ladies, uh, uh, migrants coming from all, all sorts of republics would register in the hacker forums. Uh, the number of registrations increased uh, 400 percent during that date because there is no social objection to that. A young, talented programmer surprised uh, the, the bank. It was $10 million in the bank. The next day, there is no $10 million. That's a surprise, really. But uh, no prison term, no actual prison term. And it was five years suspended. And the person who stole bushes is a criminal. He is a bad guy. I wanted to make a funny story about that, but it's not funny at all because that proportion, the, the pro what we're protecting ourselves against. Well, that would not happen to you, but we are not afraid of new types of crime, and it's very successful. These are these guys. They have different faces. I tried to build the theory that that should look alike, but no. They're different in faces, but they're all boys. Very few girls in this business in Russia. Age 86, 83, 88, 85, 84, 89, 93, born. This is how they look like. Uh, some are not very nice looking, some quite handsome. They are like us. What other things are not, not good enough? This is the interface. As I says, the, um, said, the most popular client is uh, stealing money from internet banking. We have online banking. M many of you have. And it sounds complicated that there's a virus. It should be delivered to the computer where there's an online banking system installed that could be your computer or the accountant of your organization, maybe university accountant, whomever. Unfortunately, it works very simple. This is what the interface looks like to infect your computers. It's 2-0. Let me show you something here. This is how the infected computers look like. And well, above, name of the payment systems you can see. And you see the amount of money on the account, 2 million rubles, 2.7 kk means 2,700,000 rubles on the account. It's all very well automated, very simple. You don't have to know uh, the basics of programming to work all of this. Hello? These are uh, infected computers of various accountants. This is the information about the money on the account and uh, command buttons. It's all automated. 
Before, a computer criminal was a person with very high IQ. There are smart people still in this business, but a lot of simple users always there working these things. So this technology is evolving very quickly, uh, very many interface, very easy to understand what is read. It's still criminal proceedings going on. But if you have good eyesight, you will see the amount stolen. It's millions and millions of rubles. Why is this the most popular crime? Because any legal entity has quite a lot of money on their accounts, and using the virus, you can easily steal this money. Right-hand side, you see uh, the control panel of virus for mobile phones, stealing money from um, applications of the mobile phone. This panel uh, well, shows the names of the banks, uh, which infects uh, the virus, Promsuez, Barkas, Sberbank, and other. Uh, an example of the number of companies that are being hacked. So a group called uh, uh, Carburp, uh, they are all in jail now, thank God. And uh, this is the panel, control panel for the uh, malware. This is basically a control center for the virus. Uh, uh, there is a statistics uh, for uh, contaminated computers, uh, Russia over one million computers. So at uh, any uh, single uh, point in time, 1.4 million uh, uh, private individuals and uh, uh, legal entities uh, would uh, have uh, the virus invented by those guys. So they stole a lot of money. There is a popular myth that the Russian hackers do not steal money in Russia. No, they like stealing money in Russia because uh, just uh, watch this. Uh, this is a Russian uh, uh, criminal group uh, and all the computers are in Russia. There is uh, Peru. Poland, uh, Portugal, but an important uh, idea is that it is not only uh, important to put some malware on the computer, but somehow to get the money out of the bank accounts and uh, cash out uh, this money. So in Russia, there is organized crime, which uh, makes it possible. So it is much more profitable for the Russian organized crime to steal money in Russia, because very quickly you can cash out the uh, uh, stolen money. Also about computer literacy, 1.4 million uh, companies and people who were uh, infected uh, uh, simultaneously by this uh, virus. Uh, this is the control panel for uh, malware and infections. Uh, how, how do you do say, an attack? Uh, you break uh, a popular site um, and the uh, criminal can uh, capture that traffic uh, for online banking. Uh, that would be a website uh, with the uh, news for accountants or the banking industry. Uh, you put in the spoil kit, uh, which at the, mom at the moment when you enter uh, this site uh, would find uh, a vulnerability in the browser or in the operating system and uh, just, uh, you know, put um, uh, a very small executable file on the computer. Uh, then in the operating system, you have uh, both iOS and uh, Linux. I mean, some people believe that uh, Macs and iOS uh, computers cannot be infected. They can. The paradox is that uh, criminals don't want uh, to use Macs. Why? Because uh, across the world, uh, people who uh, are dealing with corporate uh, money management uh, accountants uh, in big companies, they don't use uh, uh, iOS, they use Windows. Uh, so for criminals, it is just probably just smarter to invent uh, uh, viruses uh, for Windows, but not for iOS. So if you have uh, an Apple, and when the Russian accounting system would uh, uh, switch over to iOS, uh, then you have to probably uh, sell the shares of those big companies, because uh, criminals would uh, simply start uh, uh, infecting the iOS-based computers uh, uh, more intensively. Myths. Some people say, well, what about uh, antivirus uh, software. Importantly, uh, computer criminals are no idiots. If uh, they can set up a movie studio and uh, run it for four years to understand uh, what can be taken against them, it means that criminals cannot live in a world of uh, well, the idea is very simple. They are not idiots. So when they launch uh, some malware or a virus into production, they test it against the virus databases of all the computer uh, uh, antivirus uh, software. 
It, it would be strange to believe that if a criminal would launch a virus, uh, that, that computer would not know about antivirus software. I mean, uh, it, it's probably, I mean, there are such criminals, but it would be very unprofessional, so like that person who broke into the uh, displays on the Sadovoy ring in Moscow. So this is the control uh, uh, panel of Anoma Group, uh, which stole from Russian banks uh, uh, directly, not from clients, but from banks, uh, over a billion rubles. So in total, uh, they robbed uh, 50 banks. Uh, to the amount of 1 billion rubles. Uh, on the left, uh, there is information that uh, this virus is in one of the computers uh, uh, in one of the banks, and it is online. Uh, to the right, I can also show this to you. To the right, you probably notice uh, some uh, familiar signs. Do you see those signs? Do you, do you think these signs uh, show which of the viruses is, is active uh, right now uh, on one of the computers uh, which uh, was infected before. So I come over here just uh, uh, I'm like an old man uh, staggering here. So uh, these are antivirus uh, software packages where, again, the viruses are quite active. So criminals are no fools. Uh, they bypass uh, antivirus software. So in 86% of cases, uh, computers who were uh, broken into and where money was stolen uh, actually had antivirus packages. There are startups now which say that we will, uh, you know, introduce a machine learning system which would be combating uh, cyber crime and detecting uh, uh, viruses of the new generation using this phrase, uh, machine learning. Well, do you think uh, criminals cannot use machine learning? They have been using it since 2003 to kind of bypass the machine learning uh, used by companies to catch the viruses. So there are no limitations uh, for criminals not to use a particular technology. Uh, you, they use uh, cryptography, which was invented in the 80s, uh, to produce their viruses. A lot of homeopathy in uh, uh, cyber uh, space as well, unfortunately. 86% of computers uh, in botnet uh, have an antivirus uh, program installed, licensed, uh, uh, updated, etc. So, mobile devices infection. Since we now have cheap smartphones available um, based on Android, which is about 80% of the uh, markets of mobile phones in the world. Uh, for criminals, it is a big, big uh, bonus. This is the control panel uh, for the Android-based uh, smartphones uh, for viruses. The, the important thing is to steal money. But since there is a virus uh, on the phone, I mean, there are uh, lots of things that you can find on the smartphone, say uh, chats and uh, pictures, and you can monetize that. You can. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, code that and uh, ask you to pay money uh, to decode your information. But most commonly, they steal money. They had 1,000 uh, smartphones infected. So for $200, uh, you can request uh, uh, the infection of 1,000 smartphones uh, based on Android. Android. Uh, now, uh, on the right, you see uh, the column, what you can do with the phone. You can uh, listen to uh, your uh, conversations. Uh, you, you can listen to conversations uh, when the phone is idle. You can uh, uh, download the pictures uh, from your phones. You can steal money, in, install applications. But people say, I mean, I don't have any online banking service on my phone. How can they steal money? I'll go back to the SMS. If you don't have money on your phone or you don't have an internet banking application, then the infected phone will uh, show you this uh, uh, web fake. It, it is like a native uh, message from Google Pay. Uh, which says, uh, please update uh, the data of your uh, credit card uh, to use uh, Google Pay. You put in, you know, your data, the uh, CVV and uh, the expiry date and the credit card number. 
Remember, when you, you have uh, uh, transferred money uh, from one card to another card, you need uh, the number of the card and uh, uh, one of uh, code. Uh, uh, and uh, the virus is on the phone. It would hide the, uh, the, uh, this uh, SMS with the code. So uh, they still use your credit card number and the hidden uh, code that was received, but you never saw that. Uh, Mobile devices infection. Uh, uh, by, well, I mean, people would be doing this uh, anyways. There is a, a technical uh, capability of sending SMSs uh, uh, from the name of some other people. So you don't need, you, you cannot trust uh, SMS messages that you receive uh, from any person. Uh, well, I mean, we can send SMS uh, from any of you, and uh, it would come uh, to the uh, person that uh, we would like to send. Uh, there are. Uh, lots of opportunities to find this information. This is fun. I mean, you can make fun. I, I mean, I'm making fun myself, so yeah, I mean, I would ask you not to do this, but you will do it anyway. So, uh, well, I mean, you can send those SMSs. The first story when we uh, uh, saw these, uh, the faked SMSs was uh, for a girl uh, who lost job. She uh, worked uh, in a red bank in uh, Russia, and she was fired uh, on Monday because on Friday, from her phone, from her phone number, the uh, all the top managers of the bank on Friday night, and this is quite sm smart, by the way, uh, the right timing. Uh, so th there was an SMS from that girl to the top managers of the bank uh, where the only kind of like uh, decent word was uh, and all the uh, other words were four letter words uh, and I and all the rest. So on Monday she was fired because I mean people thought that I mean she went to a bar on Friday night and she decided to reveal the secrets and uh, tell the truth. Well I mean it happened well I mean it uh, actually uh, was revealed later that it was not her but uh, her colleague which uh, kind of like decided to m make fun. Uh, so which means that uh, probably you shouldn't be doing the same thing as uh, that colleague of the girl did. So don't trust the uh, SMS messages. And do please remember that this might happen to you as well. The viruses and the other things are quite easily done uh, with the mobile devices. What else can I want to say? Uh, uh, let me go through the uh, personal cybersecurity rules. Uh, you are all uh, grown-ups people, uh, quite advanced, but uh, every day we see hundreds of cases when, because of banal things, uh, even advanced people um, suffer. Uh, read the book, uh, which is called The Art of Deception uh, by Kevin Mitnick. My kids uh, at the age of 12 are already reading this. Kevin Mitnick is the author of the theory of social engineering, uh, where attacks on uh, uh, computers can be done without computer methods. Uh, so this is uh, um, an attempt at cyber engineering. Uh, all those uh, frauds and you know identity thefts. I mean, this is a great book. Second story about your emails. Um, e your emails uh, would be probably the core of your personal IT infrastructure. You have uh, your social networks, your online banking, your cloud storage, all related to uh, the uh, email accounts. Uh, so you always need to turn on two-step authentication. Uh, it is available from emails, uh, from your social networks, in Instagram, in Skype, uh, in Dropbox. Uh, what is two-step authentication? Uh, this is a second uh, password in addition to the one that you invented, uh, which uh, would come to your mobile phone every time you try to access the account. Uh, don't receive it as an SMS. but. Uh, yeah, but you, you use a Google Authenticator, uh, which generates uh, one of uh, uh, passwords uh, every time you access your Google account. Uh, this is the way uh, it is. So every minute, uh, the second password is being uh, updated. So if my original password is stolen or is revealed on the internet, so without access to, mobi to my mobile phone, uh, my email account still cannot be used. 
Well, I mean, uh, huge people simply don't have any two-step authentication for the iCloud. Uh, you only have a login and a password, but you don't have the two-step authentica uh, authentication. Please uh, make me uh, joyful today and uh, switch on the uh, two-step authentication right away. Diversity risks. Um, sometimes um, you have spam email, you buy something, so you need to have uh, several emails. Uh, one which is uh, linked to the iClouds and uh, cloud storage is uh, one is only used for registration. In 2017, uh, this may be quite dangerous. Quite simply, you have a Samsung or an, an iPhone and your e email is linked to the uh, phone uh, that uh, you use for conversation. And if you if you uh, phone is stolen while you're talking because your iCloud would be seized. You won't be able to block the iPhone when it is stolen. So you need to have several emails that are not linked to your principal account. I can personally then explain to those who don't know what I'm talking about, about cybersecurity and the age of cybersecurity and cybercrime. I mean, uh, our experience uh, shows that uh, Having some uh, good minds and brains, uh, you can make uh, uh, various nice products and compete uh, with uh, big companies even at uh, a young age. Uh, crime is changing, and uh, future crime would be only about IT, terrorism, and uh, traditional crime. Uh, so com society lacks good ideas and good people who are doing good things uh, in IT. What we are doing is that we have an early warning system. Say, so if a person wants to hit you in the face, first you need to kind of like stretch your hair your arm and then hit you in the face, right? So you need some preparation for hitting you. So companies are doing cybersecurity, are working, uh, or, well, I mean, mostly when uh, the uh, fist is already touching your face. So it is important to see uh, the swing of the arm. Uh, so uh, criminals uh, take time for preparation. It can be minutes, days, or months. So at an early stage uh, with big data and uh, machine learning, you have to capture and uh, identify the swing of the arm. For example, the attack which changed the exchange rate of the ruble by 15% in 2015, the attack started in March 2014, but the attack itself happened in February, uh, February 28, 2015. So this is the timeline, right? Uh, we identified this potential threat back in 2014, one year before the actual attack. So uh, for future, there, there would be a uh, a place for many more technologies that we still don't have. Uh, so, so this is the way we look like. This is our center. This is a, a 24 by 7 uh, monitoring center where we would be monitoring various incidents and malware. By the way, those who are interested, you, you can, um, I don't know, probably sign up for a tour. You can visit us in Moscow. This is a great team that we have, and uh, we are opening uh, many more offices uh, across the world. We have a uh, presence in Latin America, in Lebanon, in Singapore, in London, uh, like I said, uh, an office in Miami. So if in future you would like to work in cybersecurity and especially with the IB group, uh, we would be appreciative of this. Oh, by the way, we are also crazy about uh, uh, fighting crimes. So uh, our logo is uh, looks uh, a little bit like FBI sign, uh, but we also fight and box and shoot. And uh, thanks to good ideas and uh, to being able to unite good people, we can produce good technology. Sometimes we actually demonstrate them. This is a nice piece of hardware. I mean, people say that in Russia you cannot produce uh, nice-looking things. No, you can. This is an engineering uh, uh, beast of art. Uh, uh, sometimes we can show something to the president. Uh, here I show Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin how to register in uh, Vicky. But, well, actually, I'm showing to him how, demonstrating to him how we do cybersecurity. So, brief points and summary. Please change your mind about cybercrime. 
and your attitude to cybercrime, be intolerant of cybercrime and hate it, uh, just like I hate it. Because if uh, we are tolerant to it, then in future in governments, there will be people uh, uh, who grew up from uh, uh, cybercrime, like it happened in many countries uh, where people came to government uh, from drug cartels. About digital weapons, you need to understand that any virus uh, Uh, created by criminals. If it goes online, it can be easily used by uh, cyber terrorists uh, to attack uh, some facilities uh, where people may die. Uh, digital weapons are the same. The methods of delivering a virus to a protected network would be the same for banks and for nuclear power plants. I mean, people simply are not interested about uh, nuclear power plants. Uh, well, I mean, uh, there are crazy people like ISIS. I mean, they really want to get access to nuclear nuclear power plants. But as soon as something leaks into the internet, uh, uh, like uh, shuttle brokers uh, leaked in on the internet, so people started using uh, something that uh, previously only uh, uh, intelligences, uh, intelligence services were using before. So you need to understand the reasons for those uh, cyber criminals. And uh, one more thing, uh, we simply don't have enough ideas and methodologies uh, to, f to combat crime. There's a lot of homeopathy, uh, but uh, not so much in terms of uh, our uh, ideas. Uh, probably uh, this is my Instagram, uh, not a very interesting one. This is my photoshopped uh, uh, picture. In reality, as you can see, I look uh, uh, much worse, but I would be happy to answer your questions. So thank you very much. Good that I don't have any questions. I can go. Or we do. How, how do we work there? Oh, you speak. I speak. Okay. I decide. So who wants to ask a question? Please, please. Good afternoon. My name is uh, uh, Dmitry Kozlov. I'm from Volgograd. Uh, Probably in real time, your consultation would be quite expensive, but uh, I have uh, a question for consultation. I am also, also dealing with uh, cyber uh, crime, and uh, our um, task is uh, to really uh, do some protection of our POS terminals. Uh, is it enough to use uh, uh, PCI DSS? Uh, And well, I mean, uh, real security and PCI says uh, uh, are two uh, different things. So it's important to read technical reports how POS terminals were uh, infected and broken in 2017. I can, uh, if you write to me, I'll send you some couple of reports to read how to do this. Okay. Now you, the young man with hands. You mentioned that in uh, personal computers, uh, viruses can uh, easily live uh, uh, together with antivirus uh, software packages. But does it uh, at all then make sense uh, to have an antivirus software on the PCs? And why don't you come up with your own antivirus program? In brief. No, I cannot be brief. Why it happens? Um, because uh, there's kind of like a fight between two programs uh, at the uh, user computer. The zero day uh, vulnerability then is something that can uh, the antivirus uh, program cannot be used. Uh, So an antivirus program is a legal program and that cannot do illegal things. Uh, well, you need to install uh, some antivirus programs, even uh, the free of charge uh, antivirus programs, because there are very simple viruses that can be caught by uh, even the uh, free programs. Why we are not producing an antivirus program? You know, in, in terms of engineering, you cannot do anything uh, for the end user computer. You need to probably analyze the traffic and see if there's infective. If you go on uh, to the Sberbank uh, uh, 
uh, website, uh, your computer will be checked for viruses. So if you are an affected computer, then the Sberbank will not uh, allow you to install anything from the Sberbank uh, uh, website. Um, well, um, you have a new technological revolution in place. and. Uh, and not, uh, you know, uh, developing anything that we don't believe in. Go into Sberbank and check your computer for viruses. Yeah? That's probably a good idea. You have a question? Good afternoon. My name is Vasily. Question. Uh, now, can we use uh, some uh, password uh, managers like uh, OnePass or something else? It's been several days uh, since we learned that there is uh, uh, there is a, a whole uh, vulnerability in the uh, WPA2 for the uh, uh, Wi-Fi uh, uh, cryptology. You know, you are all using Wi-Fi without using VPN, so nothing changed. I mean, you are still vulnerable and you will remain vulnerable. Something changed for professionals, of course, but uh, not much. So, colleagues, if you are using Wi-Fi somewhere, public Wi-Fi, please use your personal virtual private network. Uh, I mean, you, you can go uh, to Google and see what I was talking about, and then you have to install this, because uh, um, a hacker or a listener uh, or a bot that, uh, that listens to your traffic can, can do this easily and capture your password. So the first uh, question was about... Well, I recommend uh, learning about passwords by heart. There are six factors of long life. Uh, training your brain is one of them. You will extend your lifespan if you do that. Sometimes the best thing to memorize the, these things. Sometimes those services would be hacked. People forget passwords. And if you train your um, brain, it's easy to uh, think of a password, uh, maybe a line from a book. My, I loved you. Uh, that love will continue forever. Uh, a, a piece of a verse uh, in Russian or in English. Add uh, exclamation marks or some numbers. You'll have a very easy one. And don't use this password that I just told you, because this is my passport. I am using it. Any other questions? Please. On the other side. A person is coming, equipping you with microphone. I'm Olga from Krasnodar. I'm an unusual question. I've been, well, did they uh, complete the film? No, they didn't complete the film because they're in jail right now. Once they're out of jail, they'll complete the film. Hello. Uh, well, on your first slide, you showed a murder and, I say, 6,000 hacks. And the hacks not necessarily um, do damage. A person stealing money and breaking a, a, a lock on the house, physical damage. There would be physical damage if it's a burglary. But if it's simply stealing something from a closed, uh, closed uh, library, uh, downloading information from there and putting into open library. It's uh, different to sorts of damage, right? Well, uh, e uh, real damage, let me tell you what it is, what can help you, a uh, real danger. Well, your correspondence, is, in, is it an internet? Is it real danger, uh, damage? Well, I read many other correspondences of other people. Well, many pieces of correspondence of other people, this is your problem. There could be a medical track where can this be discussed. But have a look. If you're seeking a job and uh, the employer sees that you cannot protect your personal data, you had leaks in your data, you would not be hired. If you're discussing a correspondence with some other person, your reputation would be hurt. If your photo from your uh, phone and you're taking pictures of yourself in the mirror and you, um, people steal it from the internet, you may have problem. Money still st stolen. Is it a real danger damage? For me, not. Uh, well, I'm not using, actually, I'm not using cards. I, I, do, you, do you use money? Yes. Uh, employers, how do they pay you? 
I spent all the money very quickly. But you're using cards, right? Payroll cards. You withdraw the cash, but you're using cards. Well, I don't see purpose in money. Let's put it this way. Uh, well, please uh, uh, speak next time uh, with, with a lecture about that. Next question, please. Uh, Sergey from Kostroma. You spoke about um, companies not being properly protected. What about um, you know, what about banks in particular? Didn't you plan uh, to uh, create a rating of banks, uh, the most secure ones? No, ratings were not to do. The Russian banks are protected better than many banks of the world. Like out of the 18 viruses created in the world, eight, 15 would be created by uh, Russian-speaking hackers, and they will try those out uh, against Russian banks. Uh, Russian banks are uh, have much experience in that, protecting themselves, better protected than English or American banks. Uh, top 20 banks, you may be sure they're you know, well protected. Russian law, does it catch up now if we're 15 years before, uh, behind uh, cybercrime? Uh, uh, 2012, we wrote a letter to the Minister of Education and said, uh, um, introduce, please, computer literacy and information security classes in schools. Better give a hand of applause to the minister. The minister responded, I graduated from uh, school 404 in Moscow, physical mathematical school, a lot of mathematics and physics, and every uh, every week, one hour, we were trained to um, uh, throw grenades against tanks. And if there's a tank attack against Moscow, and uh, if uh, the tanks attack from the side where the school is, I'm sure the tanks will be stopped. And because all Eastern is Milovo, that is the name of the region, we know how to throw grenades. Some people will throw themselves with, uh, against tanks together with grenades. But hardly that situation is going to happen. So we sent a letter to the minister. Uh, reduce the, uh, the amount of time spent by kids uh, learning to teach grenades and more more time to cybersecurity. The response, uh, response came 2017 and said uh, the letter that by 2022 everything is going to be okay. So we're behind. And unfortunately, many people don't understand how much uh, uh, we are behind. Hello, Alexei Slovskov, uh, Nister Republic. There's a tendency, it seems like, a uh, half year or a year, that half of the internet going to Tor without registering domain, main names. What are the modern tendencies to protect ourselves against these people in Tora? Well, there are methods to combat uh, gray internet, but they're slower than uh, fighting a normal internet and how it works. I like to let uh, to give you a story of how we do it. It's like the story with movie companies: the criminals becoming smarter. So the response uh, response is this: everything's possible. It's slower, it's more expensive, but there are very many successful cases. I uh, caught very many people already. But it takes a lot more time. Before you could do in a few days now, it's months or years. Uh, if we want to be cybersecurity specialists, there are courses, uh, a team of developers to uh, develop the Karelink's offensive security. What do you think about that? Should we take training from, from them? Well, it's worth it. First of all, you first go to the Bauman University, study there five years, Bauman Technical University, and read technical reports. It's not courses that you should pass, just reports on how hack attacks happen. Once you read the report, you know the problem. Like one example, there's a criminal group called Lazar. Very tough, uh, te uh, very strong technology. There's a public report about them. Nobody read that. So my recommendation, read analytical reports and like those. But training courses are good as well. But in my profession, I learned from 
books, American books that were available or articles. Ilya, let's uh, take a question from here. Yes, you please, and then you. Hello, I'm Roman in Chebaksari. That's the place I live. In interview startup, uh, I business journal, you said in an interview, you said that 15 of your employees are part of hacker groups planted there. So when there's a hacker group preparing a crime, what do your guys do uh, in that group? Well, they're planted not physically. They uh, visit the forums and part of communication. We know what is being planned. So if we feel that something serious is going to happen, we can prevent that at the stage of pre preparation. Easier to intercept. It's analytical plant, planting of the employees, not physically uh, they're present. They're remotely uh, present in those groupings. You and you. Hello, my name is Alexander. Uh, your comments, please, on the prospect of Yarova package. What do Yaravoy? Okay. The Polit well, I'll say something which is not popular politically, but I'm an engineer. I can be politically incorrect. By the time the law was enacted, it's already late. We spent a lot, will spend a lot of money to fight something to be inefficient. Are terrorists idiots? Don't they read news on the internet that to fight terrorism? The government is going to read WhatsApp and Telegram. Are they out in the forest? Know nothing about that. Let me uh, um, write something in the Telegram about terrorist actions. No, they're now in crypto messengers. Uh, Trim Vikra, their own developments, that's what they are using. So my personal attitude is this. If we want to, to fight uh, terrorism, don't talk about it. Do it like Israel does. Just fight them, not talk about that. And the second part, you need to be aware. You need to think uh, like engineers. 2017, what is in law will not help fight terrorism. It will only spend a lot of money. This is my personal attitude towards that law. Unfortunately, uh, information security specialists are not were not involved in preparing that law. That's a big problem, not only for Russia, other countries as well, because politicians are responsible for laws, and they don't know really how the Internet works. Sometimes I feel that they believe that uh, you can ban bad weather, like in St. Petersburg. That would have been good, but it would never work. You can ban prohibit Bitcoin. You cannot stop that. Uh, it's beyond the technical possibilities of our governments. So my response uh, is, attitude is negative, but don't put me to the jail for that. No, no, we'll not let you go. There was a question over there. I have this question. Well, uh, programming a language, which one is the best for information security? And what are the cr criteria when you select specialists? Uh, should they be uh, great programmers or maybe a learned person? Yes, uh, during the interview I would ask you whether you read Google, Google or other authors. Now, there are various programming uh, languages good for various things. Network security, web security, any language can be used. And that's another story. Well, uh, when we hire people, we need uh, uh, we hire smart um, people and the sense of good in yourselves. We don't uh, take any people with any criminal past. Well, whether it was jail, prison, or um, traffic uh, penalty. Oh, t no, traffic uh, fine, uh, fines or uh, taking narcotics, not that important. But cybercrime, we never take this person. Um, and in uh, this profession of cyber security, we have analysts uh, with strong brain power who see the relations between things and read uh, uh, material and make analytical conclusions. There's one person who does monitoring. 
to um, read technical journals, uh, find correlations with incidents. So programming is good, uh, better you know programming than not uh, because it develops the brain. But you don't uh, need to be a programmer to be in this profession. Many criminologists uh, who deal with um, seized computer equipment, they need to know the basics of information storage and the restoring information. May I help you with moderation here a little bit? Hello. Nadezhda Dikut in Astrakhan. My question is, this you partially actually answered the question. Well, we heard about minimal age of your people. What's the maximum age of your employees? No, we don't have a threshold. But people should be able to walk. The older one, the oldest one is he's 58 or so. But we do not have this rule. We're not racist, we're not sexist, and we're not ageist. Now, uh, another question. What are uh, the prospects for cryptocurrency in correlation with cybercrime? There was a session yesterday, right, on uh, blockchain and cryptocurrencies. But mining technologies cannot be good or bad. A lot of crime being uh, committed with the use of money than cryptocurrency. My attitude is this. There has been a revolution. M many people are still not aware of this. But Bitcoin is simply a currency. It has all the properties of a currency. And in some of the properties, it's better than other uh, currencies. Uh, some people say this uh, currency is not uh, uh, supported by gold. Do you think our currency is supported by gold? And gold is also an agreement between people that this is some of some value. That was agreement between people that gold, gold is of value. It's not kings getting together, let's legalize uh, gold. People simply put their trust in gold. Thanks to blockchain, you can always be aware at which point in time who owns which currency, how the currency moves. Very easy to track the corruption lines. There's a good book, Cyber Criminal Number One, who, about the person who created Till Crot. And uh, th that book d describes how well, they used uh, the line of payments in uh, Bitcoin and blockchain of Bitcoin. They found that criminal. Well, some people say the internet is bad. No, it's not the internet. It's people who commit crimes. And cr currency is not good or bad. If a person wants to buy drugs uh, using currency, uh, that doesn't make money bad or gold uh, good or bad. If you interpret currency as a main means of illegal payments, to remember how many uh, crimes are committed using rubles. We have a question here. Hello, my name is Alexander Leonov, Moscow. Can you comment on this? Well, the level of cybersecurity in North Korea, how high is it? There's, there are experts who are saying that uh, that uh, in North Korea there is a special form of cybercrime and it's supported by government. While China, considering the sanctions that uh, been um, in, in imposed by the Security Council, cut off all connections with North Europe, but Rostelecom laid the cab cable to North Korea, supporting maybe cybercrime in that uh, respect. Okay, we're now having international uh, legal discussion. Well, I don't have this notion of good or bad country. I believe in response to your question, well, there are technical data showing that in North Korea there are groups uh, associated with the government who do computer crimes. We issued a report actually on the Lazar a criminal group and down by the computer we know that person. It's in the uh, headquarters of the Korean army. Is it coincidence? No, probably not. Read that report. It's in that report. But the message is important that no country can use this method. Um, whether it's Russia, America, or North Korea. But the governments still don't understand that. The 
a digital weapon using for espionage or steal money, it's easy to duplicate. If a country thinks that they invent something unique and that would stay within that country, uh, having used it once, and then uh, millions of people uh, can repeat that, borrow that uh, experience. So what we're uh, trying to achieve, and our friends internationally, we want to have a ban on the use of digital weapons by any government, any computer attack should be governed by criminal law. No chance that any country using that. Unfortunately, today, not only in North Korea, but other countries as well are playing with this, and that will end very badly. Like we know, um, many such cases in uh, civilization. Maybe many people will die. Only after that we'll try to agree on that. You remember the Re League of Nations appeared after the sec first uh, world war. The UN appeared after the second world war. The agreement on uh, non-proliferation was signed after Caribbean cl uh, crisis. But we don't have uh, an international document of what to do. Uh, in case of a computer uh, t attack, government, government uh, sponsors. There have been accusations of Russia uh, being involved in elections in the US. There are stories about North Korea, etc. Well, there are stories, and this should be stopped. I have a question? Of course. Okay, so uh, you said something about uh, the fact that antiviruses are weaker against viruses because viruses use uh, unlawful methods while uh, the antiviruses have to use uh, lawful methods. So uh, if you're saying this is the weakness of antiviruses and that's why you don't like them, does it mean you use unlawful methods in your uh, uh, analysis against, anti uh, against viruses? And then my second question is a bit personal. So uh, I know in the Russian Federation, LinkedIn is not very much available, and then you have one. So does it mean you use some unlawful means to access LinkedIn? Thank you. Хорошо, что вопрос не на корейском. Good that the question was not in Korean. Need LinkedIn, use VPN to access to LinkedIn. So it's not a problem to for you to uh, download any VPN client and use LinkedIn. My point of view that it's not a very smart idea to block any kind of social network like in LinkedIn in Russia. It, it's very dangerous for our digital economy. The first question about antiviruses and viruses. So this is the engineering fact that antiviruses no more uh, provide for your system any kind of security. It's, it's engineering fact. So it's. It's not topic topic of any discussion. I could send you a lot of technical details and reports about that. It's the, the the topic of about the zero days in in, uh, in viruses. It's only one of the main. So it's main, more than 200 things which viruses more active and more proactive on your PC than antiviruses. Спасибо. London is the capital of Great Britain. Yeah, we need to have a round of applause here as well. Uh, Evgeny Kirov, it's an open secret that uh, there are break-ins, but there are also ways to make money, which is not really legal here. For example, online casinos, uh, slot machines online. So I saw that myself, how this is being done. So you had a friend uh, who played uh, those online casinos, right? Yes. It was not me personally, but my friend. Uh, so whatever law enforcement uh, is doing is just to confiscate computers, and then they buy new ones, and then they run the online casino again. Are there any ways uh, to oppose this illegal money making? So you know, in uh, this country, we have a program of uh, digital eco economics. So if any law enforcer or any politician would need to understand that uh, in addition to what you described, there is also 
a huge gray economy, uh, piracy and uh, fake goods and uh, all those uh, gaming platforms on the internet. If you don't control them, then you lose a lot of money. Online casinos, of course, they don't do any legal uh, transactions, and the government uh, is losing a lot of money, and many people lose their personal money. Uh, how much did you lose on the online? Uh, well, I mean, I was uh, in the business of providing computers for that. Don't, 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 you know, say this publicly uh, that you provided computers for online casinos. And uh, why it happens? Uh, why do we have such uh, soft uh, punishments? Uh, I mean, people probably do not understand it. Uh, uh, I mean, right now, but if you are farsighted, you understand that you make this country uh, poorer. So as soon as there would be people who would understand uh, that this is a problem, then you have to probably move on. It depends on the uh, maturity and the intellect of mayors of cities and law enforcement. People who think it's OK to have such online casinos should be sent to jail. I suggest two last questions, because we need to wrap up this session. Yes, we have a question uh, there in the end of the uh, audience. Uh, well, I mean, the microphone was stolen. My name is Eric. I'm from uh, Akno uh, University. And my question is, uh, 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 could we bypass the system by using special passwords? Uh, if you take uh, AliExpress, then, uh, uh, well, I mean, there is a gadget uh, where they can uh, uh, take up to a 1,000 uh, uh, rubles uh, from your smartphone without uh, any acceptance. Uh, well, I mean, people like to do this in Moscow Metro. Uh, and, uh, I mean, people do this. I mean, we had a person uh, that, uh, I mean, there was a case in Moscow Metro. Uh, a person was uh, taking a train, uh, listening to music, and then he heard the sound of a transaction being made. And then he turned around and saw that there was a guy next to him who actually was stealing money from his online banking, from his phone. So he kind of, like, uh, hit him. So, but there is a bigger chance of uh, your computer being infected and uh, all your online banking may be uh, corrupted. So people who do this uh, mobile gadget uh, uh, thefts uh, would be uh, people who are not that smart, who cannot do anything else. So as soon as you meet such a thief, just hit the guy. From India. Sir, I have a doubt. Like, uh, we know there is a thing called as dark web. It's, we, know, we all know it's not a good thing. It's a really very bad thing. It helps for like terrorism and all that. They are spread, uh, buying and selling guns over there. So my question is, if we know that this is a bad thing, then why the all governments are not coming together and banning this? Like we can, like the same way China is not using Google. The same way, is, isn't it possible to stop dark web? And can you just comment on what exactly dark web is? Because it's a really big concept, I guess. So um, the answer is, uh, quite simple. I am not agree that dark web, dark web is a bad thing. There are many good things in dark web. Technology could not be good or bad. For example, in dark web, there are many uh, free journalists use dark web to publish free articles in the countries which have problem with um, censorship. There are many investigators use dark web to hide uh, identity. So, and the third thing, that there are many successful operations against most dangerous crime group in dark web. You could go to the website of the Europol and see a lot of publications and information about the arrests. But I, I, agree, I agree that in some countries the problem of a dark, dark web is not strong for, for politicians because they just don't understand what is this. But, uh, Again, I'm not agree that dark web is the bad thing. Bad thing is the people who use dark web for the crime. Uh, and the second thing, it's possible to fight against bad thing in dark web. <laughs> the, the, the most difficult, again, we don't have a single law for any countries against the cyber crime. That's why uh, cyber crime is so successful right now. Thank you. I don't know, Ilya, I should probably wrap up, right? Uh, 
Well, thank you to all of you for the attendance and for answering the question. I mean, I know the questions from all the girls in the room, but we won't ask this, right? What? That's it. I mean, there should be some privacy, right? I can tell you, I am the worst candidate to have relations with. Because my only wife who divorced me, her last uh, action was she threw a big vase into my head. So I married to my job. But maybe I didn't meet uh, a person who would not be throwing vases uh, into me. It was not a computer, after all, uh, so it, it's good. So everything is fine. So friends, uh, thank you for this uh, uh, attention. And thank you, Ilya, for this uh, very bright presentation. You will have millions of questions be, to be asked of you personally. Yes, you can take pictures, you can take selfies. But let me remind you that at 3 o'clock, we want you back in this uh, room. And we will continue our travel uh, through future technologies. And we'll be talking about quantum-based computers. We talked about big data. We talked about how to protect our data now. How do we uh, enliven in our data? What kind of computers we have and what technologies can we expect? Please come back at 3 and we'll talk with you. See you.